Okay. This is a little help vic video for vectors. We're going to talk about what a vector is, how we add them, what the result of, and equilibrium are. The easiest way to think of a vector is it's a force with a weight. Roll tree, please come to the office. Roll tree. At the moment, I'm standing on the floor, and 175 pounds of force is acting acting directly in the floor. My weight. At the same time. That's a resultant force. That's the whole force down. At the same time, there's an equilibrium force of 175 pounds acting in the equal and opposite direction. A vector always has a magnitude, the number, and a direction. Typically, we think of these things in a coordinate sense. So we will say something like a vector acts at 30, 30 degrees with a magnitude of 2. And usually there's units, but in pre-calculus a lot of times in algebra 2 there's not. So we will go from the initial side up to the terminal side, 30 degrees. And we will draw a vector too long. And I'm going to take the scale off here because I'm not drawing at the scale. Anytime we do this, we can break this into a triangle. It can be drawn as a right triangle. And we can find the vectors, and if I call this vector V, italics V, all right, the magnitude of this vector would be 2. This would be the vector. I can find its x component and its y component. Vector x, vector y. Now, it is simply the triangles here, and we can use Sakatoa. And it's the x part, because the angle is always between the x-axis and the vector, is always the magnitude, cosine, our related angle, which is the angle here, and our y portion is always sine. And if we use our calculator, we can quickly determine the value of these parts. I know that's 1, and I know if I use my calculator with cosine, this is 1.73. So in this case, we can go 1.73 and 1. Whether you go at an angle and a distance or do it this way, you end up with the same result. The advantage to this, being able to do components, is for addition of vectors. When I have to add a vector here, I can say another vector here. We can add them tip to tail. If I move them, I can do this. And it'll be a little difficult here. Maybe I'll shrink this one down a little bit. Take it off the board. Let's make the blue one a little shorter so it fits on the board. And we'll make it a little steeper. So if I move this tip to tail, so if I push something with the green, then I push it with the blue, the resultant is the red vector. All right? And you saw on the last board that we can break each of these down. Well, here's the green part, and there's the green part. Here's the blue part. Here's the blue part. And what I want you to catch and notice here is if I draw the reds in, the sum of the x green and the blue green, if I pull the blue down, you'll see that the green plus the blue makes the red. And likewise, if I pull, if I, uh, pull the green over, you'll see the green plus the blue is the same as the red. So when we're given two vectors, if we want to find the resultant, I'll call it r, we want to find its magnitude, all right? We can do it by summing the x components and summing the y components. Again, this is the result of the equilibrium for this force would be equal and opposite direction. And this would be the equilibrium. And we'll talk about that more later. So if I put on a problem on the board, the problem would say something like this. Go 4 at 62 degrees and add the vector 9 at 135 degrees. I typically will do these separately on separate graphs. 
starting with the four, I'll swing the angle of 62 degrees and I'll put, mark the vector. I will break this into a right triangle and I'll have the x component of four and the y component of four. And I'm just subscripting the four so we know that these components come from the four. Again, I always know that when we do the vector using trig trigonometry, Sakatoa, the y component is always the sine, always the related angles between the x-axis, and the x component is always the cosine. And again, I can use my calculator, and I'm going to round to one decimal. This is 3.5 units. And this is 1.9 units. I can represent 462 degrees as 1.9 in the x direction, which we use as i, plus 3.5 in the j. And again, this is not an imaginary number because i and j indicate an axis. All right, so here we are. I've done one. I have to rinse and repeat now. I have y, I have x. I have to swing 135 degrees. And now I have my terminal side. I go out 9 this time. It leaves a related angle of 45 degrees. That's what I'm going to use in my things. But you're also going to notice that the forces this time, the x force, is in the negative direction. So we have to do the sign ourselves. So if I do y9 and x9, y is positive, so y9 equals 9 sine. 45 degrees, the related angle, and x9 is negative 9 cosine 45 because we know the sine is going to have to be negative. And again, if I plug those into my calculator, I picked 45 on purpose because then it, it quickly comes out that this is positive 6.4 and this is negative 6.4. So I can write this one as negative 6.4i plus 6.4j. And what I've done is I've broken each vector independently into its x and y components. All right. Now it's a whole new problem. I have this and this. I have to sum these. Now quickly, just the thought process is this. If I was to do this graphically, I would graph 1.9 and I'd graph 6.4. And that would put me back in the negative quadrant. And then I would sum the y, 6.4 and 3.5, which is roughly... 10 and I'm going to get a resultant. But I don't have to do it graphically. What I can do is do the like parts of each because we know we can sum them big that way. So 1.9 plus negative 6.4 is a negative 4.5i. This is the resultant, okay? We're doing the resultant here. 3.5j and 6.4 3.5j and 6.4j, if you add those, you get 9.5. 9j. Our resultant vector of those two forces will end up in the second quadrant, obviously. Negative 4.5 up 9.9. .9. If we want to put it back in vector form, we need to do Pythagorean theorem and Sakatoa again. We go 4.5 into the second quadrant from the origin, and we go up 9.9. .9. And that gives us the resultant vector here. If I do that in blue, Pythagorean theorem will get me r here. If I write that out quickly, r squared equals 4.5 squared plus 9.9 .9 squared. And I get 118, take the square root. I get a resultant, again, to one decimal place, rounded 10.9. I also have to still figure out the angle. I can calculate angle A using Sakatoa. And remember though, we have to measure the angle right here, which I'll call B, from the initial side, from the x-axis. So to calculate A, Sakatoa, I'll use tangent. So tangent of A is 9.9 .9 over 4.5. So A is equal to the inverse tangent of that fraction or I should say the quotient, 9.9 .9 divided by 4.5, 65.6 degrees. And again, A and B are supplementary. They're a linear pair, both of them. They're, they sum the 180. So 180 minus that, 
and I find that my, my B angle, the angle from the initial side, is 114.4 degrees. So I've done all this work and I've found the resultant vector is 114.4 degrees. This is in vector form or polar form. Here's the resultant vector in rectangular form. The equilibrium is simply equal and opposite. So it would simply mean changing the signs on your i and j. So the equilibrium here would simply be 4.5i minus 9.9j. Or on the vector, it's the same force in the opposite direction. So here's the equilibrium in rectangular form, and I'll pull that down here, and I'll extend the page. If we think of this force, we know that it swings over here, and here's 10.9. Equal and opposite means it will be in this quadrant, 10.9, and this should be a straight line. We know this is 65.6 degrees, so we know because of vertical angles, that is 65.6. So I'll take, I'll write this vector then, 10.9, and it will be 360 minus 65.6. How about 294.4 degrees? Or I suppose we could have written it as a negative, as 10.9, at a negative angle of 65.6 degrees. This is a crash course in vector addition, again, resulting in equilibrium. I will try to post more later.